Hi there, Pastor Ken here with your thought from John chapter 2. Today we're going to be looking at verses 13 through 17. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we want to invite you to be here with us. Lord, as we look at your word, we ask that you would help it to transform us. We pray in your name. Amen. So the question I have for you today is, do you care about God's reputation? Do you care about God's reputation? Let's take a look at verses 13 through 17 of John chapter 2. And the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who were selling oxen and sheep and doves, and the money changers seated. And he made a scourge of cords and drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who were selling the doves, he said, take these things away. Stop making my father's house a house of merchandise. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for thy house will consume me. So what made Jesus so upset? What put him to the point where he creates this little whip? Now, he wasn't beating people with it, but it was symbolic. It was making a point. What made him go to that point and where he did overturn tables and where he did push out all these money changers? What made Jesus so upset? Well, I want you to know that it was God's reputation that made him so upset because a lie was being told about his father. You see, when we look at the very beginning of this, when it says that Jesus went up to Jerusalem, in verse 14 it says that he, and he found in the temple. The word for temple there actually is a word that means all the, the temple and its outlying buildings. A little later on in this chapter, we're going to see another word used in the same, you'll, in English it says temple again, but that word's actually a lot narrower and it actually means the main temple building. But in this particular case, what we know is that Jesus was not in the main section of the temple. He was in one of the outlying courtyards. It was called the Courtyard of the Gentiles. And it was where the money changers set up their money changing stations and where people would sell oxen and sheep. You see, in order to buy oxen and sheep, you had to use the temple coin. You could only get the temple coin from the money changers. And the money changers weren't exactly honest with how they went about changing money. And so you would pay an exorbitant fee because you couldn't bring your own sacrifice in. You had to buy your sacrifice right there at the temple. You can see how this might have been a problem. It's kind of going to, like going to a theme park. You know you're going to pay a lot more for food than it's really worth, but you kind of have to pay it because you're in the park. Well, the problem was this was happening in God's house. Can you imagine the message that was sending? You see, the Gentiles who came to worship God were only allowed to go as far as the courtyard of the Gentiles. That's as far as they could go. So there, the closest they could get to God was a busy marketplace. Now, the Jews could go on to the main temple building, but they, they, the Gentiles weren't allowed to go any further. So you can imagine how much that must have hurt Jesus' heart to see a building that was intended to draw all people to him being used basically for the, the purpose of just the Jews, and that it was excluding the Gentiles who were sincerely seeking God. I want to ask you today, does that bother you? Does it bother you when people are kept away from God? When people don't have the opportunity to come and know God? I sure hope it does, because it sure bothered Jesus. In fact, it bothered him so much that he was willing to die about it. You see, this incident put him on the pathway to Calvary. It put him on the pathway to his death because by doing what he did, he aroused the anger and enmity of the temple leaders. I want you to know that the story here is very much connected to the first story that we looked at. When we look at this, the story of the water to wine, keep in, mother, keep in mind that Jesus did a miracle on behalf of his mother. His mother asked him to do it, and he went ahead and did it. In this second story, Jesus does another miracle. He drives out the money changers. It's a miracle. Why would they leave one man? But they did. They were terrified. So in the first story, Jesus turns water to wine. He adds something to a party. In the second story, Jesus actually takes something away that was getting in the way of what should really be happening. And he does it for his father. But I want you to know that you need to come back tomorrow because the story goes a lot deeper. The story actually has an impact on you and me. So come back tomorrow and find out how the temple that Jesus cleansed has a direct tie-in to us today. Hope to see you then. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, may each person who is with me right now feel your spirit working in their life. May they allow that spirit to change their life so they can become more like you. And may we all get rid of the things in our life that don't belong there. We pray in your name. Amen.